We've all seen images of these dirty spillways across the great city of Los Angeles, and perhaps on account of their manufactured appearance, few of us realized that what we were looking at is actually a river. That's right, and for hundreds of years, the Los Angeles River flowed freely throughout the city. However, frequent flooding caused the construction of concrete channeling to now guide this otherwise wild river through a fixed path. But what was the impact? Was this river always so filthy, and how did it almost start a mini Californian civil war? Well, stay tuned, because today we discover the history of the LA River. I'm your host, Ryan Sokash, and you're watching It's History. So that we have a better overall context, I'd like to start this video with a quick presentation of the Los Angeles River from start to finish. The route of the Los Angeles River begins in Canuga Park, then Bell Creek and Arroyo Calabasas meet, flowing east and north respectively. These two streams surround coastal mountain ranges, historically contributing to river flooding. As the two streams converge, the concrete channeling begins. The concrete channel system of the LA River features a trapezoidal shaped channel which facilitates low river flow in the center. The channeling aims to resolve the frequent flooding that LA used to experience, as flooding was a common environmental issue because of these surrounding mountain ranges. Continuing east, the almost 50-foot river intersects other bodies of water from nearby creeks, including Browns Canyon Wash and Aliso Canyon Wash. Flowing through the city of Los Angeles, the river continues south, additionally receiving Bull Creek, crossing through the paths of Southern California roads, and it's here that the river begins paralleling major freeways. Then, the river continues traveling south, eventually turning sharply around Griffin Park, where finally the Los Angeles River passes through downtown Los Angeles, continuing its journey until it reaches the port of Long Beach. Although we will cover this in depth later, channelizing was added in 1938 after thousands of dollars of property damage motivated construction of this modification. Now, if you're surprised to learn that LA has a flooding issue, you're not alone, since indeed, the county is considered a semi-desert region, receiving less than 15 inches of rain yearly. Despite the relative droughts, nearby counties would receive almost four times as much rain each year, eventually flooding the river's surrounding land, and it seems that this has been the case throughout history. The history of the Los Angeles River dates back centuries before the state of California joined the Union. Looking further back to a time before European settlers colonized North America, the LA River was home to native tribes, and the area near today's Los Angeles City Hall was their most vast water source. As we know today, as time went on, the river was discovered by Spanish colonizers in 1769. It soon became culturally significant to the European inhabitants of California. Explorer Juan Crespi declared the river would be named the River of Our Lady, the Queen of the Angels of Porcincula, centering the Spaniards' Catholic faith in the region. However, the future state became the property of the United States following the Mexican-American War in the 1840s. Even so, as most locals preferred the Spanish version of the river name, the United States government chose Los Angeles as the new name under the American jurisdiction. California soon became a state in 1850, and the westward expansion movement massively brought American settlers to the river, where the city of Los Angeles grew around it. And as is the case with any river, the natural state of the Los Angeles River was unpredictable. Its flowing changed often, and frequent floods brought nearly a hundred years of damage to the region. By the start of the 20th century, citizens of Los Angeles became frustrated with the river, and hence a solution was needed. The first attempted solution to the Los Angeles River problem was the creation of the Los Angeles Aqueduct in 1905. Los Angeles voters approved a $1.5 million bond for purchases, and then a $24.5 million bond for construction costs two years later. In turn, the city of Los Angeles quickly acquired the rights for this project, which would be built around the Owens River. Despite the media attention and public approval for revision, 
the citizens of Los Angeles should have treated the river with more respect. As to put things frankly, throughout this era, the river was rather filthy. You see, the large population of American settlers frequently used it as their garbage disposal, assuming that their waste would flow into the ocean without any consequences. This directly harmed the area's water quality. So by the 1920s, the Los Angeles Department of Water and Power stepped in, purchasing all Owens Valley region water rights, igniting the start of the California Water Wars. The Water Wars were conflicts between the local government and the previous owners of the water, who were primarily local farmers. The farmers unionized to attempt to negotiate a deal with the government, but after failing to strike a favorable deal, the farmers resorted to violence. Hence, on May the 21st, 1924, in a rather radical move, the farmers of Owens Valley bombed part of the aqueduct. The local government was furious, demanding the citizens confess to who was responsible. The farmers were described as terrorists, and the water wars was now labeled California's Little Civil War. While the farmers were ultimately unsuccessful, they reached their goal of gathering national attention. As California Senator Frank Flint met with President Theodore Roosevelt and members of his cabinet to discuss the dispute, the president ultimately sided with the city and jurisdiction of water rights allowed the local government to continue its construction efforts. The 1930s faced unprecedented levels of flooding in the Los Angeles area. In particular, in 1938, flood cost up to $78 million in damages. So there needed to be more than the aqueduct for the river problems. As February turned into March in 1938, Southern California was drenched in over a foot of rain. The city of Los Angeles' infrastructure crumbled in that storm, isolating its citizens from the outside world. Media attention highlighted the celebrities affected by the flood, including Lucille Ball and Milton Burley. During this disaster, a massive prop of a whale was stolen from the Warner Brothers prop yard and sailed down the LA River towards the sea. Well, indeed, this created an amusing sight for locals. The stunt would cost the Los Angeles County Flood Control Authorities a lawsuit. This natural disaster affected Hollywood, postponing the Academy Awards ceremony for a week. Many actors and actresses scheduled to attend the event could not safely travel through the storm. After five long days of flooding, the storm ended, leaving Los Angeles in devastation. Over 100 people were killed in this disaster. The initial response to the 1938 flood was to criticize the pre-existing measures. You see, concrete dams were already partially implemented in the LA River, but they needed to be increased and rapidly. Hence, authorities cited an increase in the velocity of the river. And it was for these reasons that Warner Brothers Studios and Ralph Bellamy found grounds for a lawsuit against Los Angeles County. A year after this unprecedented flood, the Army Corps of Engineers decided to take action and fix the river's flooding problems once and for all. This was in part thanks to the permission given by President Franklin D. Roosevelt with the signage of the Flood Control Act of 1941. While its origin came from the tending of the LA River, the act allowed for construction of various flood control methods, most notably dams. Other than the channeling of the LA River, the Flood Control Act has mainly focused on dam-related projects, notably the Kinzua, Fort Gibson, and Alatoona dams. The Army Corps of Engineers planned to encase the entire river, including the surrounding banks and concrete, creating a channel in the center to allow for a much smaller river flow. The only portions of the larger river spared from the channeling were the basin behind the Sepulveda Dam, the Glendale Narrow east of Griffith Park, and the river's end as it trails through Long Beach. This construction project not only preserved future flooding disasters, but also provided relief to many unemployed workers during the end of the Great Depression. This made the initiative very popular, however, the project also came with environmental and social concerns. The issue of groundwater storage was raised in Scientific America. You see, the natural flow of the LA River supplied groundwater for the city of Los Angeles for decades. With the construction of the channeling, the river would stop flowing for extensive periods, therefore removing the city's groundwater practically altogether. Even so, by World War II, focus on the river lessened, 
But by the 1950s, many political concerns surrounding the river were brought to the forefront, as the altered version of the river had direct societal impact. You see, throughout its history, many marginalized groups had found safety and community around the river, and the landmark was often a border between the Latino population and the upper classes. Many of the minority communities were displaced by construction around the river, but it wasn't only the channelizing that caused this displacement, it was also caused by nearby highway projects. The ramifications of this were comparable to displacement in other US cities, but in LA, there was an unusual addition, since people were pushed into areas with higher air pollution, which might not sound like a big deal, but LA has notoriously poor air quality caused by smog. While the water wars were most prominent in the 1920s and 30s, the residents of Owens Valley continued to battle with the city of Los Angeles well into the 1980s. By 1983, the city was still utilizing large quantities of Owens Valley groundwater for their general supply, leaving Owens Valley unnaturally dry. The residents once again attempted to fight back against the city, but as you know, history repeats itself, hence once again, they were unsuccessful. So now that we are up to date on the river's background, let's have a look at the state of it in modern times. Considering its size, the Los Angeles River has many notable features and points of interest. For example, a bicycle path through the Glendale's narrow section of the river is parallel to the 5 Freeway. Around the east bank of the river in Cypress Park is Rio de Los Angeles State Park, said to be beautiful. Many other parks and recreational services are connected to the river, including North Valley Heart River Walk and the Los Angeles River Center and Gardens. The City of Los Angeles' Department of Recreation and Parks manages these services, which is a good thing since the Los Angeles River is also home to diverse wildlife. That's right, both native and non-native species of fish are abundant within the river, and many birds also call the area home. The local birds and fish utilized the river's resources for their survival. Curiously, before the channeling, there were many mammals local to the river as well, but two species, the California golden bear and the gray wolf, were removed by humans in the 1890s. Throughout the 20th and 21st centuries, various forms of media have featured the LA River in their footage. Rather than appearing as just a backdrop, many films and television shows utilize the river for deserted city scenes, particularly in racing scenarios. Movies featuring the Los Angeles River include Grease, Terminator 2, Judgment Day, and The Dark Knight Rises. The Los Angeles River has survived for decades thanks to its concrete channeling. However, this came at a great cost. Conservation groups were formed by the end of the 20th century to maintain the structures and keep this river alive. Even the activists don't desire the complete restoration of the river because removing the concrete would once again expose Los Angeles to the vulnerability of floods. Hence, conservation here is the trend. The first significant group dedicated to revitalizing the LA River was the Friends of the Los Angeles River, established in 1986. The Friends were focused on public access and habitat restoration, organizing general river cleanups starting in 1988. At first, these cleanups were barely attended, with less than 20 volunteers at the first event. Despite the early struggle, the Friends continued to plan these cleanups, which by 2019 became the most extensive river cleanups in the United States, where thousands of volunteers clean up waste in and around the river yearly. The Friends also dedicated their activism to fundraising. Specifically, they donated a million dollars to the Army Corps of Engineers in 2012 to complete a study that resulted in a monumental restoration plan for the river. The Friends of the Los Angeles River were not the only people interested in restoring the river either. Restoration efforts have existed for decades, but there has been a constant push since 2002, most of which are focused on the recreational use of the area. The Los Angeles City Council formed an ad hoc committee that year dedicated to the accessibility and revitalization of the LA River. A revitalization master plan began to form by the mid-2000s, hence the Department of Public Works Bureau of Engineering formally proposed the start of this plan in 2005 and strived to make the LA River the city's front door, paying tribute to the river's original landmark status. 
In 2011, the LA River Recreational Zone was created, which officially legalized the recreational use of the river space. In the following years, advancements were made to this master plan, which included the schedule for constructing a continuous bike path along the river in 2013. The projects continued, and in 2018, Los Angeles County decided to update their revitalization master plan once again. The updated master plan was formally released in 2020 and aimed to reach nine goals related to the river. They ranged from weather and environmental concerns to the social issues surrounding the river. This plan is unique because it focuses on the present and 25 years into the future. Perhaps most importantly, the 2020 plan aims to create an everlasting, sustainable Los Angeles River. And that'll do it for today. Thank you all for watching. Please consider subscribing and don't miss our playlist about the history of Los Angeles. Click right here. See you guys, I learned where the annotation goes. Until next time, this is Ryan Sokash signing off.